Hi, my name is Andy Baker. I'm a geography lecturer at IEPY. I teach G110, Introduction to Human Geography. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the 2012 election using a lot of core concepts that we've talked throughout the uh, entire semester. Further, you know, I hope that if you take my course, you don't know what religion I practice. And I also hope that you don't know who I would vote for uh, in election. I'm going to very much keep it fair and balanced and just stick to the facts as far as what happened uh, in the 2012 election. Uh, and so we're going to use a lot of geography concepts. So uh, if this is a high school teacher or a fellow college teacher, I highly encourage you to use this uh, in a geopolitical discussion, especially when we go to the United States. Uh, and so my name, Andy Baker, once again, IEPY Geography Lecturer. We're going to look at the map here. We see red states and blue states. Red states Republican, blue states Democrat. So in 2012, I actually see more red on this map. It's misleading because different, uh, different states have different population size, which results in different electoral vote numbers. Uh, but if we see this map, once again, we'll kind of compare it to other maps, and we look at the 2012 election, it was pretty much 50-50. Uh, so Obama won 51% to 47%. Uh, if we go back to 2008, actually Obama won by a bigger margin in 2008 than he did 2012, which is one of the things we're going to work with here, is the fact that the country actually went back towards the middle. Although, yes, I understand we didn't go back to voting for a Republican president, but we went back to uh, being more in the middle. Uh, and that's reflected uh, very much in these uh, New York Times maps uh, that show motion and the motion means as much, how much of a shift from 08 to 2012 was there in a particular area. So if you have red arrows or red shifts, that means you really swung to the Republican uh, from 08 to 12, whereas blue areas switched back uh, to uh, Democrat. So very few areas went more Democrat than they did in 08. However, if we look at 2008, a whole different pattern. So we can see how actually areas uh, that were, went more Republican in 2012 actually went more Democrat uh, in 2008. And so as geographers, we're going to figure out what's going on there. Why do we have these patterns underlying uh, as far as the different colors? What's going on there? Socioeconomics, demographics, migration, all kinds of co concepts we discuss uh, throughout the course of the semester. And so, like I said, we're going to focus in on dem uh, demographics. And I get a lot of my information from a guy named Andrew Gelman. He wrote a book called Red State, Blue State, Rich State, Poor State. And it really, I think, hits the home the idea of demographics and how you could very much find particular areas, particular individuals that are pretty much a guarantee as, as far as how they're going to vote based on their demographics. And so when these elections, like I already mentioned, 50-50, uh, it's going to be just a few specific groups where these elections are going to be swung. Uh, one of the interesting things Andrew said uh, in 2012, just after the election, uh, he said that we're a, th a country that is a 30-30 nation. What that means is about 30% of us vote Democrat, about another 30% vote Republican, and then the remaining 40% doesn't even vote. Uh, unbelievable. But anyway, um, so let's go ahead and look at some data here. And so the key idea here, if you don't know how to read a, a line graph, moral to the story with this slide is, as you increase in wealth, you're more likely to vote Republican. Uh, so the inverse of that, lower income you are, the more likely you are to vote Democrat. And that's something we play out in pretty much the last four or five elections. As you increase wealth, uh, you're more likely to vote Republican. Various reasons for that. Maybe let you uh, kind of think of the reasons uh, that might be. Uh, some other ways to showcase this is looking at specific groups. And so I'm looking at the county level, uh, different patterns. And so income level under 30,000, under 30, Obama won 63% to 36%. And so you can see how that's very much a dominant uh, group. But then as we increase in wealth, uh, as you increase in income, more likely to vote Republican. So that's the first characteristic we're going to look at. One of the other things to note is the, you know, yeah, okay, well, rich, you know, all that, rich, poor, but we can go a little bit deeper. If you're a rich person from a rich state, i.e. Connecticut, uh, then you're more likely to vote Democrat. So Connecticut, one of the richest, uh, more, one of the wealthiest uh, states uh, in the country. Uh, if you're a wealthy person from Connecticut, Connecticut sorry, uh, you're more likely to vote uh, Democrat. Places that are more 50-50, i.e. Ohio. Uh, if you're a wealthy person in Ohio, you can go either way. You typically vary. It's very much up in the air. Uh, whereas if you're a rich person in a poor state, like Mississippi, very much likely to vote Republican. So once again, these elections, 50-50. Uh, and so, you know, we don't really see Mississippi too much on election night being discussed. You don't really see Connecticut too much. What state do you always hear about? Ohio. And so we can already see why Ohio is very much in the middle in a lot of 
various data. Going forward, uh, looking at even wealthier places. And so, yeah, okay, I mentioned the whole idea that as you increase wealth, more likely to vote Republican. However, that starts to change once we get to the super wealthy. So once you're over a million, five million, ten million uh, dollars and all of that. And so let's look at four very wealthy counties. Marin County, California, see Silicon Valley. It's a lot of venture capitalists, a lot of extremely wealthy people uh, that are, have their fingers in a lot of, a lot of the high-tech companies of the United States. Uh, New York County, New York, Manhattan. Very expensive cost of living there. Arlington County, a lot of lobbyists, a lot of politicians, a lot of people with a lot of money tied to them who live there near Washington, D.C. Pitkin County, Colorado, that's going to be uh, our ski slopes of Aspen, so very, very wealthy. And one of the things, we compare Kerry to Obama. So Obama very much improved from these groups that actually typically are very much Democratic strongholds. Uh, but one of the things we'll notice uh, that Obama actually, once again, he lost a little bit of that, that gain uh, that he earned in 2008. And this is characteristic in all these various wealthy counties. And so once again, a shift back closer towards uh, the middle. Uh, continuing on, when we look at the next demographic characteristic, and that's ethnic minorities. And so we've got African American, Latinos, and Asians that we're going to focus in on. And so if we look at Obama, 2008, a 7% increase. I wonder what that could be from. Uh, could it possibly be because he's an African American, so we finally had an African American candidate who had a legitimate chance to win. And so no wonder. African Americans were excited to get out and vote, and especially in high numbers for the demographic, uh, Democratic uh, candidate. Uh, further, African Americans typically always do vote Democrat uh, in uh, presidential elections. Further, this, uh, the 2008 election, really the one of the big jumps was Latinos, Hispanics, going from 55 to 68 percent. Why does that matter? Because they're coming in an increasing proportion of the population within migration, but also with uh, higher birth rates. Asians also increased considerably, but even Obama increased with uh, the whites as well in uh, 2008. However, we see some different changes here in 2012. First off, a decline in African Americans and white. Actually, he's lower than what he was, uh, lower than what uh, Kerry was uh, in 2004, and so Obama really lost a lot of his white voters from 2008. Uh, but also African Americans, a slight decline, 3% decline. However, Latinos and Asians, uh, we definitely see Latinos and Asians, particularly the Latinos, had a continued increase from 2008. So what's going to happen in 2016? Uh, Democratic, you know, pretty much strongholds, African Americans for sure. Republicans, pretty much white, got, uh, got them secured. Latinos, it's the one that's going to be up in the air. We're going to see uh, probably uh, more of a focus on Latino voters in 2016. You heard it here first. Uh, further, let's look at age characteristics, and so we see it continued another theme. The older you are, the more likely you are to vote Republican. Uh, and so 18 to 29 year olds, uh, we see Obama winning, 30 to 44 year olds, Obama also winning, but as we go up to higher, uh, higher uh, age groups, we can see Republicans win um, uh, with, uh, with Romney winning those groups very comfortably. Uh, further, we can see increases, what these, in, these numbers over here indicate is increases from uh, 2008. Um, so as you increase in age, you're more likely to vote Republican. Uh, and so if I focus in on two particular groups I've talked about earlier in the semester, uh, if we go back to our good friends, the population pyramids, you can really see this, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, but the groups that's currently 18 to 29 year old, uh, and also the 45 to 64 year olds. Uh, and so we got the baby boom population, and in the baby booms kids, the echo boom, the millennials, uh, we can also see that young group. Now why do I have them circled here, why do I have them highlighted? Because they have a huge role in our elections. Let's just go to the population pyramids to find, find out what, what, what's going on there. Uh, so here we can see 1992. The group that dominates the United States as far as demographic, as far as age groups, is the baby boomers. And so they determined everything. Uh, in the 90s, it was all, you know, consumer products were marketed to this group. Uh, elections, marketing, everything was uh, geared towards the baby boomers. Because that made sense. They're the biggest uh, segment of the population. We get to 2008, we can see the baby boomers no longer do they matter as much as they used to. Now we can see actually two groups uh, that have a large role. And so pre pre uh, previously, the baby boomers controlled a lot of the, how these elections would go. 
Now we saw in 2008 the role of young people. And so young people become an increasing proportion of the voting uh, population, also being more likely to vote Democrat. We can see what caused this shift uh, to more uh, of, of a Democratic uh, presidential victory uh, in 2008 and 2012 compared to the previous elections. Further, 2012 and 2016, we can, can see, see how, of course, this is going to change throughout time. Interestingly enough, there's actually more 30-year-olds in the 1990s in the United States than there are today. This is all it's about ebbs and flows of the population, uh, different dynamics of the different age groups, baby boomers and so forth. What this is, is showcases, once again, shifts from 2008 to 2012. This is focusing on Indiana. A long red arrow means it had a big shift. Uh, among the one of the biggest shifts in the entire country of young voters going uh, back to Republican. Almost 50-50 here in Indiana. Uh, and so other states actually continued to head uh, more to the Democratic candidate where we see a lot of other states though went more uh, Republican, particularly Indiana. Uh, for, all right, we go to education. Another characteristic, another key theme here. Uh, those at the bottom, or sorry, those at the top of the education spectrum and those at the bottom of the education spectrum more likely to vote Democrat. Those in between, a little bit more 50-50 or voting Republican. Let's take a look at that. So if you have no high school degree, 64% Obama. Um, so those at the bottom of the education spectrum, postgraduate, PhDs, lawyers, doctors, masters, uh, all those different types, uh, also more likely to vote uh, Democrat. However, when we get to these groups in the more in the middle, uh, college graduates especially voted more Republican. So once again, these elections are very much 50-50. They're one at the margins. So the target group, you guys, soon to be college graduates, they want your vote because they think that you're very much up in the air. Uh, so once you start uh, uh, getting a paycheck, uh, they're thinking that maybe you'll change and uh, you'll be, uh, become a little bit more uh, concerned about how much taxes you have to pay, for example. A little bit less democratic, maybe. Uh, but we'll come back to that idea a little bit later on. Uh, two different types of college uh, campuses. And so although uh, West Lafayette up there in Purdue, although they did go, uh, that county did go Democrat, uh, Purdue definitely has more Republican students uh, than IU Bloomington. So what's going on there? Why is that? Why is it that a liberal arts school like Bloomington, IU Bloomington, uh, and, and a land-grant agricultural school like Purdue have different characteristics and a lot of it where their students are coming from. And so, of course, Purdue, a little bit more agricultural, a little bit more farming. You, know, you don't go to Bloomington uh, to become a farmer. You know, and, you know, so more, more of the Bloomington students, where they come from, they come from urban areas, suburban areas. And so we see a difference as far as urban versus rural. Rural, more likely to vote Republican. Urban, more likely to vote Democrat. And we can see how that plays out when we think about student bodies, student population characteristics. And so let's go a little bit deeper uh, and talk about more about urban versus rural. And so now we're looking at the county level. Uh, so those counties that have a large amount of people, 500,000 people or more, Democrat stronghold, those are places we can pretty much go ahead and predict Democrats will win. Urban areas, 69% uh, Obama. Uh, however, if we go down to smaller places, 10,000 to 50,000 or even rural, or what's classified as rural, you can see how those are more Republican uh, uh, areas. And so this is one another key theme, urban versus rural. Once again, where are these elections won? Very much in those margins, those 50-50. And so we've got our red areas that are rural, we've got our blue areas that are urban, the purple areas, the in-between areas, the areas that are going to be the focus of a lot of uh, 2016 campaigning, suburban areas. Uh, so suburban areas are very much 50-50. Uh, so that's where a lot of these elections are going to be won uh, in, in these uh, 2014 uh, in 2016 elections coming up. All right, continue on with size. Uh, places that are quickly growing have historically been suburban, uh, these suburban areas have historically been Republican uh, areas, these fast growing areas. Farmland 10 years ago, that's today housing sub uh, subdivisions and neighborhoods that are popping up out of nowhere. Uh, these typically are places that Republicans uh, win. And we can see actually how McCain lost a lot of these uh, these areas. Uh, Flagler County, Florida, suburban Jacksonville. Kendall County, Illinois, suburban Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Newton County, suburban Atlanta, Loudoun County, suburban Washington, D.C. Uh, so we can see how McCain lost a lot of these kind of these places that were pretty much for sure going to be Republican uh, areas, uh, but Romney won a lot of them back. And so we can see how these percentages are a little bit closer to being uh, back to where they were. However, 
Not, all the, not always is that the case, particularly Kendall County, Illinois, what's going on there. Guess who's from Illinois? The Democratic presidential candidate. Uh, so that's a lot of the hometown effect. Uh, other things, Newton County, Georgia, is actually has a large African-American population, which is uh, not, not too normal for uh, suburban areas. Uh, further, Loud Loudoun County, Virginia. Uh, Loudoun County, Virginia, a lot of young people. Continuing on, looking at gender. So we've got these other characteristics. And so if you're a male, more likely to vote Republican, more likely to vote for Romney. If you're female, more likely to vote for Obama. Further, let's go a little bit deeper with that. If you're a married female or a married male, more likely to vote Republican. If you're a single female or a single male, more likely to vote Democrat. Very interesting patterns there regarding sex and uh, gender uh, and marriage characteristics. Further, continuing on, looking at religion. Uh, and so we see religion, uh, particular groups we can see going one way or the other. Uh, of course, Mormons, just like African Americans, voted for Obama. Mormons voted uh, in large numbers for Romney because guess what? He's a Mormon himself. Uh, Protestants, evangelical Christians, very much vote Republican, and we saw that in 2012 for sure. Catholics, a little bit more 50-50. Catholics, although quite conservative, especially, uh, obviously, abortion. On certain social I issues, they're quite liberal. So they're a little bit more 50-50, a little bit more up in the air than uh, the Protestants. Then we get the Jewish population. Jewish population, highly urban. So we can kind of understand that characteristic as far as being more Democrat. Uh, but then also the non-believers, the, those that have a, uh, believe uh, that kind of like Neil Young, out of the blue into the black uh, when you die. Uh, the non-believers very much uh, are Democratic uh, voters. We really see that in 2012 here. Uh, so all these various religion, demographics, we can see them all play out on a map. I guarantee you, we'll see that right now.